Right, so now, <clears throat> as you were writing this down, when we would have talked about this last semester, we wouldn't have had already had done this chapter, the whole when does our function increase, when does our function decrease, we wouldn't have had dealt with that at that point. We would have said back then that if our velocity, you know, this question, is the velocity of the car increasing at two seconds? Understand you are looking at an acceleration graph to do this. So we need to use acceleration to identify if our velocity was increasing at two seconds. So in terms of this question, what do we think, yes or no? Yeah, Carter, what do you think, Carter? I think so too. And then they're going to ask you why or why not. So we need to have a nice, succinct, specific mathematical way of justifying that. So what do you got, Carter? Okay, I like a lot about that, Carter. You're a good guy, but this makes me cringe. Okay, don't use that word. So he says it is positive. which then means our velocity is increasing. So I like all of that, except this little phrase. So we wanna be really careful. You don't wanna say the curve, the graph, the function, it. Those are all general terms. We really have two functions in play right now, right? You have a velocity, that's what the question is asking. And we are looking up add an acceleration graph. So if we're not specific right here, there's no way to know what it is. Is it a velocity or is it an acceleration? So that's why we wanna not use that. So when you reference it, Carter, what are you referencing? I'm referencing the, um, acceleration. Good. So you could write the word acceleration. I'll put A of two, my acceleration at two is positive. That's really all you need. This is a this is unnecessary. And on that day when you're testing for three hours and 15 minutes, you kind of want to save time as much as you can. So you don't necessarily need this. This is the answer. That's all we need is that's how we know that our velocity is increasing. We can come up here at two. Our acceleration is positive. That means our velocity is increasing. That's what I would have just told you. You would have had some background knowledge, a lot of you from physics. Now we have also done this chapter where we've talked about any function will increase when its derivative is positive. Well, f of x is not specific to a position function. Can't the acceleration be a function? Isn't your velocity a function? So if this question is asking you your velocity, wouldn't our velocity increase when its derivative is positive? And we now know, we knew that before, that our velocity's derivative is the acceleration. So that's now kind of another way to approach this idea. Anything will increase when its derivative is positive. So if I ever ask you if the acceleration is increasing, and I'm not, you would look for the derivative of the acceleration to be positive. And we can continue to work on down that line. Okay? No, not asking that. So I don't necessarily write that. All right, letter B. <clears throat> it says, at what time in the interval 0 to 18, other than at the time of 0, is the velocity of the car 55 feet per second? So you were told right at the beginning what I have highlighted here. Right at the beginning, when we start measuring the velocity of our car, it was already going this fast. This is now telling you, just the way the question is written, at what other time is it going 55? So at least one other time, we hit that, that velocity again. This is a big part of the homework that I'm having you do is just a bunch of these graphs, and this will be a big component of it. So what I want you to do right at the beginning here, let's indicate that at this time, we were already going 55 feet per second. Again, understand how all these things work, position, velocity, acceleration. We are at the bottom of that list. This question is asking you about a velocity. So if I'm looking at an acceleration graph, I'm at the bottom, I'm answering a question with respect to velocity. The only way I can go up is through an antiderivative, if we had an equation, or the area. And we can do that. So the area underneath this curve 
is going to give us our changes in velocity. So that's why these are nice linear functions that we can break up into geometric shapes. This is a rectangle with a base of two, and then think unit wise as well, just so we understand why this works, two seconds multiplied by 15. 15 has a unit of feet per second squared. So when we multiply those together, notice how you don't just get 30, you get 30 feet per second. So what that is telling us, <coughs> In this interval, our velocity has now increased by 30 feet per second. We'll keep a running tally then. So now at two seconds, isn't our guy traveling 85 feet per second? We then have a triangle that we can break off from two to six. So that is what, four by 15, so that's 60. So this is another 30. Tells us at the time of six, he's traveling 115 feet per second. Continue on. We're looking for 55 again. This is the question. So while we're notice all this stuff comes back to us, right? Our acceleration is positive. So isn't our velocity increasing from 55 to 85 to 115? Notice how our acceleration is going to become negative. That in turn is going to make all our velocities decrease. So now this is what? Negative 30. So now our velocity has in fact decreased to 85. And then the natural thing to do, so let's go ahead and do it, would be to go to 14. And then you'd have a 4 by 15, that's a negative 60. But then what you would find is you're going 25 feet per second there. If we're looking for 55, it happens somewhere in between. And you're all pretty bright people. We went from 85 to 25, that's 60. We needed to go from 85 to 55. So that should have happened right in the middle here. That's when we would have been going 55 feet per second again. So that's at least one answer. So let's come down here at t equals 12 seconds. That doesn't necessarily mean that's our only answer because notice how our acceleration is going to become positive over here. And a positive acceleration means our velocity is going to increase again. So we just want to kind of finish this off and see where we end up. So this triangle is what? 2, 15 is 30. So half of that is 15. So our velocity has decreased to 10. As our velocity or our acceleration jumps back being positive, now we're going to get a positive what, 15. So at the very end of all of this, we were traveling 25 feet per second. I'm going to highlight the actual readings here. This guy. So in terms of how many, where did we hit 55 feet? It was just at 12 seconds. So that's what you're going to put. And then letter B is asking you not only that, but why? Like, how do we know that? So again, we have to put some sort of explanation, justification to this. So the question why, so understand this here. If it ever says explain, you have to put this into words. So if, the ex, if it says explain whatever, that requires you to write words. When it says justify, or why, you could put it into words. So notice what we have, we have why. You could put it into words, but usually what that means is you can actually somehow use some mathematical expressions to justify this and not have to put it into words. We do not want to put this into words. It's a very lengthy explanation if we try to write this in words, and the more you say it, the more likely you're going to say something that's incorrect. So the way we're going to write this without having to put it into words what we're going to basically do is we're going to, I'll set it up in words first. We're going to take our not current, our initial position. We're going to add our change in position. Uh, don't, I'm not, and by position in this case, I suppose it's velocity. And then we're going to add our change in velocity until it equals 55. And we're going to do that mathematically. So the way we can do that, because we wouldn't put this in the words normally, our initial velocity we know was 55. The way we calculate a change in anything, that's what the integral is. The integral is used to accumulate change. So when we integrated from 0 to 12, the acceleration function, didn't we find that that equaled 55? That little 
equation there replaces us having to put into words that I started at 55 feet per second. I found the area under the curve to integrate it. When I integrated it and going through all that explanation, this does all of that for us. We don't try to explain if you don't have to. All right, and then that's it. You move on to letter C, you're well on your way to your five. All right, easy stuff. Now, the work we just did makes C and D pretty easy also. So now go to C and answer C. We've already done this. Sort of, sort of. The numerical answer to this is easy. We've already done all the work for it, so we can just go back up to our graph. And when they simply ask you at what time um, did we have our maximum velocity, and then, I don't know, what is it, and then at what time? That's pretty straightforward. We can just look up here. Everything I have highlighted in yellow. Oh, I missed the initial one. Those are our velocities. So isn't 115 pretty clearly our largest velocity, and it occurred at the time of six? So that's easy. So in terms of the couple of points that would have been in play for this question, you definitely would have said, I forgot already, what was it? This is what happens to get old, 115. So our max velocity is 115. Is it feet per second? Not good. You don't get old. Feet per second. And then that occurred at the time of, was it six? Yeah, at the time of six seconds. But then they ask you to justify this. They want you to explain, justify why that is. So what this question, or which one are we at? Justify. This is, and this you have to do it this way. It goes back to all of this stuff. When we're looking for an absolute maximum or an absolute minimum, you have to show them that you've considered every single candidate. If I want an absolute maximum velocity, Again, we're replacing velocity with the idea of f of x. So normally I would have said, all right, if I want an absolute maximum value of my function, it would have been when f prime is zero, f prime is undefined are my endpoints. Now that I want a maximum velocity, it's where the velocity's derivative is zero, the velocity's derivative is undefined, or at my endpoints. So two candidates without question, and if you don't show that you considered these, you would not get this justification point. Two candidates are 100% zero, and where did we finish, 18? Yeah. 0 and 18. If you don't reference those, you're not getting the explanation point. So we've taken care of this one. Now look to see any other candidates when our V prime equals 0. V prime is just your acceleration. <clears throat> that's the graph you were looking at. So 6 has to be identified as a candidate, and that's obviously our answer, so that's easy. 16 is a candidate, so you need to list both of those. And then the last one, is there any place where our acceleration is unde undefined? Be careful with this one. Your acceleration is not undefined right here, correct? Isn't it 15? If I go to this sharp corner, isn't our acceleration defined to be a negative 15? Our acceleration is defined everywhere. So th that does not produce another candidate. The derivative of the acceleration has some issues. That would be undefined in some spots. But the acceleration itself is fine. So our only candidates is this. And then just like I would have told you to do back in the day, the nicest thing to do here, the easiest thing without having to use any words. Oh, don't use A though. We know all these values already, right? So it's nice if these are our candidates, we've shown them that we've considered all of them. And then we just line them up. We know V of zero was 55. V of 18 was 25, that I remember. 
be a six is our answer. That's the 115 and 16 was 10. That's uh, no, not moving. So we've considered all of our candidates. We found their values. Now we can make with good justification this as our statement that that's our answer. <clears throat> okay. D, answer D. Also pretty straightforward. Somewhat of a trick question, I suppose. All right, so D, at what times in this closed interval? Also, I should have pointed out, when they start asking absolute maximum, you, you want to pay attention to the, the limits. Notice how they have the closed interval there. That's why we need to make sure we're concerned about those endpoints. So that's something to be aware of. I should have mentioned that. So in this case, does our velocity ever equal zero if we just kind of look through our graph here? No. So our answer is no. And since we've already provided the justification above for this, basically, we can say the absolute minimum velocity Because wouldn't these also be all the candidates for our minimum here? And we found that our minimum velocity was 20, or no, 10, 10 feet per second. And you don't have to justify it anymore because you've already shown it above. All right. <clears throat> really, really, really common. All right. These questions are on there every year. Next page. If you have your calculator, pull that guy out. All of these questions could be answered without a calculator, but this question is a calculator question, and it's much, 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 much easier if you have your calculator in your hand. So for letter three, really, really simple little setup for this. That's why it was an A-B question. An object moves along the x-axis. Its initial position at the time of zero is two. The velocity is given by this equation. Letter A, what is the acceleration? So pretty simple in terms of what you're supposed to do, position, velocity, acceleration. So I'm going to take my velocity here. And then this one, they're being kind of nice because you could do this by hand. They are not wanting you to do this by hand. In fact, normally you're going to get some bizarre equation like the inverse tangent of 1 over 1 plus e to the 2x. And they're going to want you to find the acceleration at a perfect time. And should you be able to do this by hand? Yeah, but it would be a bit of a nightmare. They're, they're really testing you here on the math eight option that I showed you yesterday. They want you to use math eight. It's one of the four things they're going to test you on in your ability to use your calculator. And then it's very, very hard to mess this up because then you just go right to A of four. You go to your calculator. You use that math eight key. I can promise the one on the ones on the quiz or the test that I'm going to give you wouldn't be one that you're going to ever want to approach by hand. It's going to be really nasty. And you just use the math A key, and then it's super simple. I forgot this. Uh, sign of pi over 3t. And then you just tell it we're going to take the derivative at 2. And then voila, that's our answer, negative 0.524. No units, don't make them up. They're not building in a point for the unit. So don't do anything extra and start throwing units around that they don't even give you. All right, letter B. They deliberately do this often, and they obviously did it here, they want to see, do you understand the difference between velocity and speed? Or do you, are you the kid who thinks they mean the exact same thing? So letter B, statement no, number one is saying, in the interval of three and four and a half, the velocity is decreasing. And then statement number two, the speed of the object is increasing. So you're going to say, are either one of those correct? You're going to provide a justification for both. So if I say statement one, 
if I want my velocity, we just talked about it, my velocity will decrease if my velocity's derivative is negative. That's really your justification here in a minute anyway. Is it negative or is it not? We've already done this, right? Didn't we just in the first question find the acceleration at four? Four just so happens to be nicely in between three and four and a half. And we found our acceleration at four to be negative. So statement number one is true. And then you would simply say because A of four is negative. Statement number two, really, really old idea here. We haven't talked about it recently. Is the speed increasing? So now I would say my speed is increasing. But our issue is, what is the derivative of speed? That is not something we've talked about. So if our speed's derivative is greater than zero, we'd be increasing. But we haven't really talked about the derivative of speed because it's not something we can really factor in. Anybody remember how we found out if something is speeding up or slowing down? Or for physics people, a lot of times it's referred to as accelerating or decelerating. A really old idea. Say that one more time now. Okay, sure. Okay, anybody? All right, the way we determined if we were, remember, let's phrase it this way, because this is the way that we referred to it. Remember the speeding up versus the slowing down stuff we did? So if our speed is increasing, does that mean we're speeding up? So speeding up and slowing down is, it's a velocity and an acceleration question together. If they have the same signs, we're speeding up. If your velocity and acceleration have the opposite signs, you are slowing down. We already know that our acceleration at four was a negative 0.524. So what we really just need to know is what's our velocity at four? You had a calculator in your hand, so you can just throw that into the function that you were given here. Oh, what is that sign of four pi over three? It's gotta be positive, I don't know what it is. Definitely positive though, what is it? Let me get that. So our y coordinate in the second quadrant should be positive. Oh no, pi over three, two pi over three. Four pi over three is in the third quadrant. Never mind, it's negative. Sorry. What is it? Negative what? 0.866. Okay. Negative 0.866. So because of that, you'd say we're speeding up. So it's true, I suppose in terms of the context of the question, and you would just say V of 4 and A of 4 are both positive. All right. Bring this Monday. I want, I want to make sure we see this. This is now kind of the new little idea, and then C, a D is a big one too um, in terms of how you're going to be able to do this. We should be good with this homework. Um, the, most of the homework assignment, so I'm going to go ahead and, and keep it for the original date. If you were to look at it, it's mostly these graphs that we got done doing today. And then the last couple are just some calculator questions. So this will be due Monday night. You know, if you have any issues, let me know. We'll have some time on Monday real quick if there's anything that we're completely confused about. Um, this does elicit some questions usually, so I probably will leave a little bit more time at the beginning if we need it. But if you just look, it's just a bunch of graphs and then being able to do the same stuff that we just did with them. Okay? All right. With that, just, now I feel bad. It's Super Bowl weekend. I'm going to the homework assignment, so sorry. All right. We'll see you guys Monday. Have a good weekend. Yes, sir.